What's up, everybody? Walter Bernasiak here with Ayanna Wade and Heather Roos. We are here in Metropolis, Illinois for the 40th annual Superman celebration. And there's a lot of stuff going on around here. It's like a carnival and Comic-Con combined, basically. Uh, and today we're counting down the top five best Superman the Animated Series episode. So while we're doing that, we're going to show you around here. So let's get to the countdown with number five right now. Number five. Apocalypse Now. Parts one and two from season two. Darkseid and his forces from Apocalypse finally make their move to attack and conquer Earth. Standing in their way is Superman, Metropolis' special crimes unit led by Dan Turpin, and a mysterious ally named Orion who has arrived early to warn Kal-El of Darkseid's coming. I'm going into spoilers for all these episodes, so you've been warned. Sans the arrival of Supergirl, this was the finale of Season 2, and it pushed things to a new level in terms of action and emotion. We're introduced to Darkseid's son, Orion, who was given up as an infant in exchange of heirs to guarantee peace between Apocalypse and New Genesis. In fact, they delve into the entire history of these two warring worlds with a great scene in Part 1. It added depth to some of the characters and situations that were previously introduced, all while doing it in a quick enough way that didn't detract from the main plot of the episode. Orion is an awesome character that we got a little more of in the two Justice League series. Steppenwolf also shows up looking somehow more realistic than in the Justice League movie, but when Darkseid arrives on Earth, he's all intimidation. Michael Ironside does a fantastic job voicing him, and he's great throughout the series as Superman's main physical threat. Perhaps his most heinous act in the entire show was the cold-blooded murder of Dan Turpin. Savor your moment of triumph, Superman. But remember, victory has its price. Turpin was a featured side character in the first two seasons who was modeled after legendary comic creator Jack Kirby. Among many other contributions to the medium, Kirby created the new god, so it was appropriate to give him a big send-off in this episode. The image of Superman standing at his grave is among the best and most heartbreaking moments in the series. Goodbye, old friend. In the end, the world didn't really need a Superman. Just a brave one. We are in front of the Metropolis tent where Brandon Routh is answering questions for fans right now. And behind us is this amazing mural with all the Supermans, but minus Henry Cavill. So do with that what you will. Um, but let's keep the countdown going with number four. Number four. The late Mr. Kent from season two. Clark Kent is dead, or so the world thinks. After using his investigative reporter skills to try and save an innocent man from death row, a bomb is planted on Clark's car, which blows up and sends it crashing into the ocean with Kent still inside. With a witness seeing all this go down, Clark can't rise from the vehicle without his identity as Superman being revealed. And so, Clark Kent is pronounced dead. Also destroyed was the evidence that was going to clear the inmate. Superman must now find out how to protect his identity while saving that inmate and discover who is behind the hit on Kent. This is a very different type of episode for Superman the Animated Series. The structure is different, and boy, does it get dark. I really love how much we get to see Clark Kent, the reporter, in this. It's not an aspect of the character that we get much of in this show, and this episode proved we could have used more. I suppose I could have flown to the governor as Superman and given him the disc, but that could have raised some awkward questions. Maybe there was some ego involved, too. I wanted this to be Clark's victory, not Superman's. The narrations are well done here and present an interesting way to tell the story. We even get a peek at the inner duality of Superman and his secret identity. He just can't be Clark anymore. But I am Clark. I need to be Clark. I'd go crazy if I had to be Superman all the time. The episode ends with Superman saving the wronged inmate from the gas chamber. Yes, the gas chamber. And we even see the final moments of life of the crooked cop who framed the accused. Seeing this ending with the cheery Superman theme following it is so creepily bizarre. He's Superman! Jeez! Hey! We're outside the Superman Museum right now, inside the phone booth, where I am. And this museum's super cute, it's only $5 to get in, open seven days a week. But we're gonna keep this list going with number three. Number three, 
Brave New Metropolis from Season 2. Dr. Emil Hamilton has created an interdimensional gateway to try and match the power of the Phantom Zone projector. Lois gets closer to check it out when she's unexpectedly transported onto a parallel Earth. This world's Lois Lane was killed by Intergang, which changed Superman drastically. More dictator than protector, he's joined forces with Lex Luthor to make Metropolis safe again. Unfortunately, the city has become a very strict police state with many people living underground to try and overthrow the authoritarian Superman. When this world's Man of Tomorrow sees Lois again, it sets off a chain reaction that will change this alternate Earth for better or worse. This was an honorable mention in my top 5 best alternate versions of Superman video, and it is definitely one of the best episodes of the series. Deep shades of grey are present across the whole episode, and what led Superman down this path is almost understandable. It presents him in a more closed off, yet vulnerable way. When Lois shows back up after being killed off on this Earth, Superman tries to explain his new attitude. For too long I fooled myself into thinking I was doing a simple cleanup job, that if I did enough good, people would follow my example. I didn't realize it was a war. And suddenly, you were a casualty of that war. The music in this episode is fantastic as well. It really sets the tone for a moody and fascinating character study. With Lois pushing the action, we also get to see the seeds planted for her and Superman's developing relationship. We found Batman and a Superman here. It's truly a magical place. Um, but before we get to number two, Superman has something he wants to share with us. Well, everybody out there on Facebook, please, if you would, check it out. Uh, Heroes for Kids, which is out of Perryville, Missouri. Please, it's our charity group. It's a nonprofit. Well, thank you. Awesome. All right, let's get to number two. Number two. World's Finest, parts one through three from season two. Batman and Superman finally team up in this three-part adventure. The Joker has come to Metropolis and combines forces with Lex Luthor to kill Superman. Batman is not far behind as Bruce Wayne has business in the Super City. The Dark Knight and the Man of Steel clash with each other while looking for the Joker, and things get even more complicated when Bruce starts a romantic relationship with Lois Lane. There's no love lost between the two crime fighters, but can they coexist long enough to stop Joker and Luthor from doing irreparable damage to Metropolis? Some of you may be familiar with this three-parter as the Batman Superman movie, which it was released as on video later, but it was first presented as episodes in Superman, and was a milestone for the DCAU. I don't need to say much about this one to get most fans interested. Batman and Superman the Animated Series collided with a great tit-for-tat back and forth between our two heroes, and it's so much fun to watch. Their chemistry is phenomenal and developed more and more as the years went on. Another note I wanted to mention was how perfect for each other Bruce and Lois seemed. These characters just gelled here, and I really wanted to see more of them together. I think maybe even more than Catwoman or Talia, Lois was Bruce's best match in this continuity, and it would have been an awesome twist to see them as a couple for a while. In any case, this three-parter is just amazing. It's a must-watch for fans of these characters. Everybody, before we get to number one, I'm going to talk about these awesome Walk of Hope uh, Superman symbols that are all across the street here in the main square. Uh, all the different symbols of Superman are talked about, and they have a little blurb about them on the bottom there. So it's pretty cool to see how the logo has changed over the years. But I know what you want to see. The number one best Superman the Animated Series episode. Let's get to it right now. And the number one best episode of Superman the Animated Series is... Legacy, parts one and two from Season 3. Superman has been brainwashed by Granny Goodness into thinking he's the adopted son of Darkseid. For months, Kal-El went from planet to planet doing his father's will. When Darkseid sends him to conquer and rule Earth, the people who always saw Superman as a symbol of hope see that that same man has come to destroy and pervert everything he once stood for. This two-parter can stand up next to any DCAU episode. It's that good. We basically see the fall of Superman as he loses control while under the influence of Darkseid. They take the characters to new places and really push the envelope. 
The ending battle with Darkseid and Superman's lingering feelings of dread and guilt pushed this one to the top. It's a tragic ending to a great series that explored Superman in a way that felt familiar, yet fresh. Apparently there was supposed to be a fourth season that dealt with the aftermath of this incident. Superman was to somehow regain the public's trust. We never got to see that directly because the production team was assigned to Batman Beyond, but this event was brought up as a major story point in Justice League Unlimited. This series is considered among many to feature some of the best Superman stories, period. I won't disagree. It may not have reached the heights of Bruce Timm's Batman the Animated Series, but this show should not be looked over. It more than did justice to the Man of Steel while expanding the DCAU to incorporate a whole world of characters. Those characters and Superman himself were pushed even further in Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, both of which I have top 5 best episodes of you can check out right here. This week on my personal channel, you can find out where these honorable mentions ranked in a brand new episode of The Countdown Continue. Also, Superman the Animated Series takes on the original Flesher Brothers Superman cartoon and a new installment of my Versus series going up soon. If you want to hear more about our experience in Metropolis, Illinois, make sure you stay tuned for a video covering the Man of Steel's hometown. Hey, hope you guys enjoyed this super countdown. We were really having fun here at Metropolis, Illinois. You can always hit us up on social media to let us know what you'd like to see next on Top 5. Walter, where's that for you? You can find me on Twitter at awesome underscore Walter and on Facebook, awesome Walter B. Awesome. And then Heather, where's that for you? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, or Twitch. And you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. Awesome. We are going to go explore some more, go meet some superheroes. Until next time, we'll see ya.